Hi everyone, my name is Chris Cook. Um, I'm a game designer working on this game in my spare time. Um, and one of the features that I've been using, which I very rarely see anyone else use, is um, objects inside blueprints. Um, so an object is um, the lightest class you can basically make in a, in a blueprint. Um, actors and everything else all derive from it. Um, but objects are really good for storing and manipulating data as, as well. I've been using structs a lot. I was using structs a lot to basically store data and kind of try and manage that data. So I'd have like a list of villages and I'd add those to a struct, but then each villager would have their own structs inside of like all their data and stuff. And you know, for anyone who's used structs, especially nested structs in blueprints, you know how unmanageable it becomes and how difficult it becomes not only to access data, but even more so to modify that data inside. So much so that it became just unruly and it didn't become viable anymore for me to use. So what I've started moving over to is using objects. Um, so an object is something that you can add data to, but one of the powerful things about an object is it can have functions inside as well to run its own data. Uh, sorry, run its own uh, yeah, manipulation of data and, and you can grab data from it and stuff. So like a struct, you can have as much data in the object as you want. You can have as many variables in there. Um, like I said before, you can then have functions built inside the object to um, control, manage, access that data, uh, which means that you don't have to have those functions dotted around in different blueprints trying to control it. You can basically have it on that single object, reference the object and call those functions and it will, it will manage that data for you. Um, so if I show you how I'm using it, um, I'm using them to add modifiers to my villagers. And these modifiers are all event driven as well, which is the powerful thing about the objects so that for example here um, I've got this, this settler here uh, she has nowhere to live at the minute and that adds a modifier on uh, this modifier which is I have nowhere to live which modifies her happiness by 10 um, this this is controlled inside an object so that object is basically added to her um, and then every time we were trying to reference her happiness we just basically look through the objects and find out the the final result of our happiness. Um, but in here, if I set the instant build, and we just build a house, and then we assign her to it, you can see now that that modifier has actually removed itself. It's gone back to the base happiness of 50, and then a new modifier has added itself on automatically, which increases our happiness by five, which is I have a house. Um, and again, that's event driven, and what it's doing in the background is it's similar to like a struct, but it's listening out for a, for an event in the world. In this case, is if the residency changes. And if it is, it basically just removes itself and we add another one back on afterwards. So you can see now, again, back to the base 50, but then we add another modifier. I have nowhere to live, so it reduces that to 40. Um, and I'm also using it for stuff like sickness modifiers as well. So hopefully she'll get a cold because um, she has no clothes and no house um, and it's freezing cold. There we go, that's a cold. Um, so now if we click it, you can see that she has nowhere to live, minus 10, but we had another modifier on top of that as well, which is now I have a cold, minus five. Um, this one that contains some more logic as well, so when it's initially first added, it also reduces that villager's health. And the health isn't like the happiness where it's a base value and goes up and down based on the modifiers. The health is... Uh, static value that you affect it and it stays like that until another action happens, for example, healing or, or something like that. So after a while, um, that modifier I've got for the cold is actually running logic in the background and although it's event driven, it's also listening out for a dispatcher as well to, to count up time. Uh, and once she's healed enough, that cold will disappear and again, it'll just remove itself and the happiness modifier will go back up. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's really, really powerful. Uh, so if I show you an object is, so if you want to start off by basically creating an object, the first thing you want to do is create an actor, um, create a new blueprint class, but instead of like choosing an actor or a pawn or anything like this, you want to open this, this here might be hidden and choose an object. And again, this is, this is the, the base class. Um, so if I just call this uh, test, good old test, uh, and show you this here. Um, so in here, you'll see it almost looks just like a normal blueprint, like a normal actor, except it's parent class's object. But probably the first thing you'll notice is when you're trying to add an event, for example, like begin play, tick, etc. All that stuff's gone. Like 
they're all contained within the actor. That's that's called contained in the actor class. Because this is derived from the, the parent of the actor class, which is the object, we don't have any access to any of that. So stuff that I have to so well, I, I've got around this by basically creating a new event and I've called it initialize. And then when I create these objects, I just immediately call the initialize event. And that's almost like from begin play. So when it's constructed, I call the initialize event and I do any logic I need to in here. Um, and like before, like I was saying, um, but if this is similar to a struct, what I meant is that in here we can have, um, you know, or any kind of variables. So just imagine you had a struct with like an instance, and, you know, you had a struct with a transform and all this information. And we call this like, you know, location and we call this like lives, um, you know, player name um, you know, is alive, etc. These are you know, all those variables that you would normally have kept within a struct. But again, before, as before, you know, if you wanted to have um, an, a, a to change this data on this struct, so if you wanted to say, for example, um, get is the player alive, you'd have to get the struct, break it open, grab that variable and check it. And if you wanted to change that variable is alive, you would then have to do like set members in, in a array. And again, it could be quite difficult. Uh, in here, you can just basically have, you know, set player is alive and have a Boolean in here. Um, you know, alive and then you can just basically call this um, event and this can do stuff like you know like this um, you could do um, kill player and then this could be basically set is alive to be uh, false but then also you know remove um, the amount of lives in here as well um, and again, if you're trying to do this in a struct, you'd have to grab all this data and set all this data through a long, lengthy process. And each blueprint would have to do its own kind of um, functions on this on this data as well. So it'd become really difficult to go through and manage. Uh, and again, this gets exponentially more difficult for some things. The structs are fine. The, the, the you know, good, quick, quick way to store and transfer data over blueprints and stuff. But when you've got a lot of data, like I do, this becomes unmanageable. And when I say a lot of data, I mean, for example, you know, if we look at all this, all these variables I've got in here, these were bought before we're all, you know, this job would be a struct with all these information in here. I had a bio of all this information, but all this would be kept in the struct itself. So it would have structs within structs and it became incredibly difficult. If I wanted to change like the job level or job XP, I'd have to grab this struct, I'd have to open it up, grab the job struct, open that up, get the job level, set the member array in there. And it was just, yeah crazy um so yeah that's how you basically create an object class and then i'll show you how i basically add them um so i have here this um so this is h mod stands for happiness mod um and you can basically ignore all this part but basically you do this so you do construct object from class and then you choose so this will basically this will almost highlight everything because like I said before everything's derived from an object but what you want to do, um, I should have got this one than the test because there we go. Uh, so this is this basically is constructed this object that we create here. And then again, you can do stuff as well. So you can expose these just like a normal blueprint. Um, and if I refresh these here, you can have, you can set these on by default. Uh, and then again, because these don't have um, events, uh, like begin player or anything like that, when I also create them as well, I will then call initialize, and that's basically calling a comp begin play on there. Um, but as I said before, like structs as well, these can also be data driven and event driven and stuff. Um, oh, yeah, one more thing before I forget as well. Um, so, one of the benefits, but also downsides to objects, is that they, if they're not referenced by anything, they will be removed by garbage collection. So, for example, here I have a, a map. You can have an array, you can have it, it's just a single variable. It doesn't matter really how you hold it, but it has to have a reference to this. So if I were just if I was just to create this like this, this this would go immediately because it's not referenced by anything. I have to add it here and then it's, it's stored somewhere and it'll be referenced. And the power of that as well is that if I wanted to just basically remove, if I remove this object from this map here, and it's not referenced by anything, it'll again it'll just be cleared up by garbage section and it'll be removed from the game. So it's really light and really um efficient um so yeah here what i'm doing here is constructing 
the object that we talked about earlier. Uh, but in this case, I'm, I've got this other one here, this um, happiness mod base, um, and I'm creating that, initializing it. Um, and then in here, so this one, if, we, if I show you uh, this one here, so this is the one that gets added to the, my villages on begin play. Uh, when they're sorry, when they're first built, uh, spawned in the game, and this initializes it. So basically, I'm binding to an event, and again, this is something else you can't do on structs. Um, I'm binding this object to an event on my villager. So here, as soon as this is added, it grabs my villager, it basically goes, "Hey, okay, bind me to this event. This settler resident is updated." And like I said, all I have to do is just add this object on, and I, I just forget about it, and then. This keeps checking every time this residence is updated. So in this case, you know, if he comes homeless or he moves into a house or changes house, this will trigger. So again, it's really light. There's no take, there's no background kind of churn. It's just only if it ever changes residence, I then check, you know, minus one means they're homeless. Are you homeless? If you are, then I call his event, which just removes. So just goes into the, the villager blueprint removes it from that array and again the gab section will just remove it from the game completely so again super light i can just basically just listen for events and i do the same um, for residents as well so if you're a resident i just add this one um, and this just listens out to if you're homeless and if you if you're homeless it listens out to if you're not homeless and it just basically removes itself um, and then i have similar ones for sickness as well so this one's um so as i said before they don't have access to tick or you know you can't do delay you can't do timers um but what i can do is on my villager i have a i have a timer which also triggers a dispatch um and this is basically used for a you know it's a long time which basically ticks down a lot of stats so like you know happy uh, sorry not happiness um hunger will start dropping down based on this dispatch uh, this this um timer but i also call um this dispatcher and it's just basically piggybacks on there and it increases healing and once the healing's got to a certain amount again we remove it so if you get a cold it adds itself on and it just ticks up over time and then once that value's got to a certain point again it just removes itself and it's all done in the background i just add this object on and i remove it when i when i don't need it anymore um but yeah in this cold one here you can have you know as many variables as you need you know you can you can really change this and um similar as well, you can also have these randomized at the start. So every time you get a cold, for example, you can have a different kind of severity. You know, it could be quite a severe cold. It could be quite a mild cold. Uh, and this can be chosen at runtime when you basically create this. So it's all, again, kept in, in a single object rather than having to have that data and those functions scattered around your blueprints all over the place. Um, so this is an example how we might use a struct to hold information uh, and also change that information as well. So for example, we have this um, custom event here, and this is basically trying to grab the power up level, which is held inside the struct. And this struct here just has just basic variables that you'd find in a struct. And inside there is another struct with the power up, and in here we have the power up name, power up level. Uh, and in here, we're just trying to increase that level. And you can see here, we have to like break open this twice. We have to get the value, we have to set it, and then set the members again. And again, a lot of places of failure, you know, any, any one of these could break or change at some point. Um, and then to get the var to get the variable information, we have to do this, where again we have to get the um, struct, break it open, break it open, and then you get the value. And it just it's just a lot of work to just change your var values inside a struct. And I want to show you how you can basically use an, an object to do that kind of same system, but a lot easier. And again, less points of failure. For example, you you have these functions inside the object itself, so you can call um, increase the power level anywhere and it will just run that single function so you only have that one place where it could ever it could break um so i've actually created an example object already it's kind of similar to how i showed you before and then here i've got the variables that mimic the variables that we found in that struct uh, and then here all we want to do is you know, have a custom event create object um, and then here we just um, construct our object from class and we choose the example object that I just created. Outer, just put itself, and then promote this so it doesn't get you know, taken by a garbage collection. And we've got all of this example object. So here immediately we have an object which has the same variables as our struct. Um, you know, for example, here the power level, 
you can easily just immediately set the defaults as well. The difference is, for example, if we wanted to do this um, event here, this function, where we're basically increasing the power level, um, we can have a function here, which is just increase power level. Get this. Increase it. Um, and that is basically the same as this. So here, all this, we can just basically grab our object and just do increase power level. And that's calling the same as that. Um, and we can even, you know, have it so it prints out the new level. Um, and back in here, we have this. So we have this value, you know. And then we can always use this to trigger extra stuff. Um, you know, if we want to get the power up name, we can have a function here, just get power name. Uh, set it as pure as well. And then we can just have the output. And then we can have here, just copy this object, so just get power up name and provides us this. Um, one thing I would suggest doing, which is just good practice as well, it's really just setting all these to, these to private, um, you know, and then using, unless you know there's only really going to be some one place and you're quite confident nothing's going to change it, it that you don't expect to, it's always good to set it private. Um, and then here, we um, we can't actually get the power up name itself. We have to go through this. Uh, and this is really good, especially if you want to set data as well. It just means that it's all done in a single place. And if you ever need to do anything, so for example, when someone gets this power up, and it doesn't have to be this, but when it gets the power up level, maybe when I always call another event, you know, it's always done in a single place. Um, but yeah, and then I, as before, you know, if you want to finish off and get rid of this struct, you can just basically set it to null, and then that will get rid of them. Um, or you can even add these to an array, and you can have you know hundreds of these these objects as well. Um, I use maps because then you can have the keys and easily find them as well. Um, but yeah, that's that's basically how you can use a struct for the same way you would use a... Uh, sorry, use an object for the same reason you use a struct. So yeah, hopefully that explained objects, um, how I use them, how you can use them. Um, you can, uh, as a similar to structs as well, you can send these other blueprints as well. Uh, you can save these um, using you know, Blueprints Vanilla Blueprint Saving System. Super, super lightweight. They do have limitations as well, but no difference to structs. Um, so if you are going to manage a lot of data in your in your game, I would highly advise you to start using objects. They're, they're honestly really, really powerful. Um, cool. So yeah, if you have any questions, um, give me a shout. Um, you can write down in the comment section below. And if you can, please like and subscribe as well. And hopefully more people will find this and we can start moving people over to this, this system, which is yeah, really, really powerful. Awesome. Brilliant. Cheers, guys.